I am sorry we were cut off there. Uh, basically, this software I've been using has a 10 minute cut off line. I didn't realise that. How ridiculous, let me just say that. Microsoft Encoder, you have to buy the full version. Ridiculous. Right, next. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? I was talking about the jaw. Basically, you can move this up anywhere you want, but basically, you've just got to get it in line with how you think the jaw's going to go. So, in this case, I'm just looking at the cheekbone here. I mean, you can even compare it to the side perspective here, um, which is much more accurate. So you just want the bone to link up for here because as you can see there's the cheekbone which does go down to the bottom of the jaw and then to the chin. Um, and these uh, lines underneath and above are just kind of uh, how your mouth is going to open and then how far it will go. Uh, and this is basically how the mouth deforms. So you just kind of want to get these kind of as accurate as you can. I mean when you open your mouth it can go quite away. So you don't want this to do too much bulging. I mean that can that's your bulge area, it can bulge you know, but you want to keep it in when you're opening and stuff like that. Um, and then you've got the eyes here which uh, you know you just want to make sure that they're central and they're okay, which these ones are. Um, and then you can also alter the spine uh, which is good for um, like meshes but it's not really appropriate or required for the or like just busts um, which is what this one is um, so next I'll just um, take you through to the um, stage 5 which is the uh, fitting and um, the tuning which uh, basically you click solve and it, it kind of calculates how your face works and you know, just basically sets it all into stone because once you get past the fitting stage, I mean, there's you can't really go back to these ones. Um, oops, I loaded the wrong mesh. It's a really old one. Um, so yeah, you just really want to pay attention and try to um, get these to be, you know, literally as as accurate as possible in the earlier stages because once it gets up here, it can either get a lot harder or a lot easier. Um, okay, so this is the mesh. Uh, once it's been solved, it takes you through to a stage five, which is ACT, which um, basically uh, allows you to, you know, basically you can click points like this. I mean, my favourite is always the eyes. I mean, see, I can close his eyes. Obviously, not too far down, but um, you create, you can create limits on the other page. Uh, my favourite is making him, you know, if you click look at, and then rotate this and then you can see he looks he follows it like literally all the way around uh, and then you've got the jaw which you can see it oh. so yeah you just um, it's kind of fun at this stage uh, just having a look at this for the first time when you do because uh, it's just you know like sit the next stage the senior character comes to life um, basically you've got the you know, lip sync options here which allow you to load base, basic um, visumes which are visual phonemes which are for voice lip syncing so when your character speaking it does a variety of shapes which you can custom assign and change um, I'm not going to go into that much too much because I don't actually know how that works quite yet um, You've got some default poses here, which uh, just basically allow you to assign the face robot how it's defaultly assigned, and your face should kind of, to a limit, try and make those happen effectively. Um, you can make him blink. You know, uh, just it's basically these are just adjusting tools, um, and up here you can turn controls on and off. Uh, you want to keep. You want to keep a lot of this on, though. I mean, it's really handy to have uh, cameras. You know, you can basically see from these points how it will work out and stuff. Um, but at the moment, we're just going to stay and use that. And once you're done, you can export a uh, you know, game export or an animation export. Uh, and if you're doing high poly, I would definitely go for the animation. But again, if you're going for a really low-level game export, then you uh, and it's low, you want it low poly. 
I don't know, just do your best with the low poly you can. I mean, I'll explain the dangers of low poly uh, uh, next, actually. Uh, so if you click Tune, which is stage six, you can go back and forth between Act and Tune infinitely. Um, and what, you'll be spending a lot of time in maps, and you'll be going to the regions, because regions allow you to assign the maximum limit for each area of the face being altered. Um, so basically, if you're, for example, the forehead, um, I mean, if you don't actually know, we'll look at maps. Uh, if you click wrinkle paint, uh, that's where I've assigned his wrinkles. Now, you, you really want, as I said, if, you, if you're going to go into a lot of detail, um, especially with wrinkling, um, I'd suggest a higher, a really high poly mesh to get these looking flawless because this, this has kind of limited me a little bit. Um, because you need to have these accurate, and when um, when I click these at the moment, uh, like that. Basically, I don't, you can probably slightly see it, but there's wrinkling going on here, um, which I assigned in the um, regions area. Now, on lower poly meshes, it's a lot harder to replicate because you don't have as many polys, so it's really hard to show on a mesh of uh, which hasn't got a lot of forehead polygons. Um, and I mean. Uh, it's it's just really advised to do it on a high high poly mesh if you're going into really super like wrinkling detail, um, or you know you have it um, possibly an export from ZBrush with a decent retopology around the forehead area. Um, again, it's completely up to you how you do it, but it's advised for a higher poly mesh when doing face robot rigging for animation purposes. Okay, so this one is going to be this one is what you're going to be spending a lot of your time on. This is enveloping with basically paint so every time you drag a specific part of the face you have these colors here which are all assigned to these blocks which you're moving um, and you're it's in your best interest to try and get a lot of these to merge I mean obviously when you're dealing with solid bones like the nose which don't move particularly with anything else they just move on their own I mean if you scrunch your face I mean yeah sure that but I mean, you just for bone it, for bones and stuff like really strong, you, you just kind of want to balance it out a little bit. Um, so basically, uh, you've got a brush here which you paint colours on. If you click pick, you can pick any of these areas. Uh, like say you want it orange. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's assigned to, but you paint it here, um, and you can alter the opacity and the radius here but you want to keep the radius pretty low because you don't need it ginormous and they do kind of have a, a bit of a limitation so by clicking the orange and as you can see it, it does kind of move it up a bit but um, basically you you just kind of have to find out which one what each one does um, control Z undoes and does like all your steps if you want to go back which you will be doing a lot of for this but and if you hold control and run over these it kind of blends them more smoothly so they look better um, and yeah I mean you can even click down the list and find the ones that you want as you can see it's moving about in the face here um, but yeah you just want to basically get these looking flawless and then you are kind of golden to do your animation um, anyway, uh, I'm going to end it there because I don't want this software to run out of time again, which I'm sure it already has. Um, but no, uh, check out the face robot guides here, um, and you can just run through them. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. They do they do require a basic understanding of the soft image program, but uh, if I picked it up, I mean, I'm sure a lot, you know any of you can. Um, Anyway, uh, hopefully, when once uh, uh, if I when I um, come back and probably do a better tutorial about this uh, when I understand more about it. Um
because I've only been using this a week so I'm still trying to get my head around it but um, I um, anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for what it was uh, this is uh, Stitch at Free for Entertainment um, signing off I guess uh, please check out our blog at http www.widff.co.uk slash blog um, and I'm sure I'll be posting more there in the near future um, thank you